Is the 5600 XT the next minimum spec graphics card for Star Citizen? Is it any good? So we compared it to all the other graphics cards we've been testing recently and you'll see that actually there's some serious issues with this graphics card in this game despite the fact that this should really be the most powerful of the lot that we've tested. So let's get into the benchmarks and I'll explain what's going on. If you want to see the test setup, it's in the description, but effectively everything's at 1080p and we are GPU bound in all of these results. So start off with Horizon and this is kind of what you'd expect from this card. It, would, it should in theory be at the top of the tree compared to all of these other graphics cards. It, it, it is in most games. I did do some research and I saw that some CryEngine games in the past did kind of favor a nvidia cards and so amd was slightly behind so that could be what's going on here it just might just be an engine thing uh, because star citizen runs on the cryengine slash lumberyard slash star engine their own customized version of cryengine but a lot of the stuff is still the same between those versions of the engine so that could be it but as then we keep going through the results you'll see that where we were at the top we're going to start to drop down and it's kind of in the middle of the pack between all the NVIDIA uh, 1660 cards effectively. Space, that's a fine result, you can play with that no problem. Quantum Travel, again we've dropped down but that's a playable result but you'd be a bit disappointed with this card being that far down this list. And the same Area 18, it's kind of in the middle of the 1660 variants. But then when we get to Lawville, we see this same issue that we've seen with other 6GB cards because this is a 6GB VRAM card and it just has these drops it has these frame drops where it seems as though memory swaps going on stuff's going on and it just tanks performance and actually it seems as though these amd cards are find that harder to deal with than the nvidia ones you'll see the one percent lows are really down um, and actually they're much lower than the eight gigabyte 5500 xt um, version so even though that card is slower overall it potentially is more playable than this because there were some real drops where it just became just not a pleasant experience to try and get around the city. It's hard to know exactly what's going on here. Like we say, it might just be that AMD cars of these generations don't play as well with this game at the moment. I haven't tested any of the current gen AMD cars, so I can't really comment on that, but I've had plenty of people say they've been getting great performance out of the current gen. Uh, and in an ideal world, I'd like to test an 8 gigabyte card uh, with a bit more power from this ratio. I guess the 50, I don't actually know what the 5700 XT has got in it, but something around that mark to see if that would make any difference because it, it just seems as though AMD cards from these generations and previous, because I've tested in the past the uh, 4700 or 4800, something like that, and that had the same sort of real heavy drops. That was only a 4 gigabyte card as well. but. It seems as though on the whole, the NVIDIA cards with 60 gigabytes don't drop as hard. Um, and so they're not great. And overall, the best lows we still see from the 1070, the 1% lows. But, yeah, I would say probably all of the 1660 variants are pretty decent and playable. And you do get these drops, but they're not as bad. And then if we just quickly finish off by looking at the clouds off in Laurel. So that previous one was with the clouds on medium and this is with the clouds off. Performance has gone up, obviously, we're, we're at a nice 40 odd FPS. Um, the lows are still a bit iffy compared to some of the other cards around there. And so I don't think we're gonna be recommending this card in any way. It's a shame because I was hoping that this, even though it had a bit less VRAM, it's still only got the six gigabytes. I was hoping that the just brute force of this card would allow it to perform a bit better. But in reality, it's just completely held back by what seems like this VRAM bottleneck that we've been seeing over the last few weeks when we've been testing this. So, this is a hard avoid. Do not buy this graphics card for Star Citizen. From here, I'm gonna do some testing with actually popping some of these graphics cards into the minimum spec system itself to see how it all performs with a slower CPU because there's no point having massive performance if it's all just held back by the CPU. So, we'll try to find some sweet spot basically between which one of these graphics cards is actually worth popping in with the i5-8400 or whatever it's called. So that'll be next week but that's enough for this one. If you like this more technical look at performance of Star Citizen, subscribe, you like this video and that's enough. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.